I know you know there is basically an endless supply of sewing tools and equipment that we can get ourselves uh, into. But uh, there are sort of always a core essentials uh, kit that we all have in sewing supplies and we all have different variations of those. This is my top 10 sewing tools and equipment that I would not sew without. So let's see what's in my sewing kit. My sewing friends, welcome back. <laughs> this is going to be a fun video, I think. If we're actually just meeting for the first time, welcome. <laughs> My name is Evelyn Wood, uh, the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com and here on this channel we do everything vintage sewing skills to help your modern day sewing so you can really take your sewing to the next level. And I think there's always a core uh, set of equipment and tools that you need for sewing. For example, we all need measuring devices but what we personally like to use for those measuring de devices might be different from all of us and we all develop our own personal sewing uh, kit if you will about what is essential for us to sew because these are my top 10 and I would not want to sew without these because it would just be a horrible experience. <laughs> now I of course don't actually keep my sewing tools in this pretty little box. I have actually not counted a sewing machine or hand sewing needle, a thread and fabric because that is like what we <laughs> construct with sewing. These are the tools and equipment that sort of help facilitate us in using those to make garments, okay? First up is a flexible fiberglass tape measure. If you've watched me any amount of time, you know I pretty much have this around my neck all of the time when I'm sewing. Uh, it's a must. I use it at the cutting table, at the sewing machine, measuring garments, measuring anything. I like to get the ones that actually have centimeters and inches and that they start from the number one on both sides. So each side starts from one. That way, no matter where you like which side you end up picking up to start measuring, you always have a number one to go with. Definitely, definitely, I cannot sew without this one. Next item is my wrist pin cushion. Again, if you've been watching me any amount of time, this is basically like the seamstresses, the dressmakers uniform. I have this around my neck all the time and this on my wrist. It's just part of the outfit. So I, uh, this is one that I've made myself and I actually do have a tutorial uh, for making this. I'll here link it down below for you. It's used, uh, you can make one yourself at using all reclaimed recycled materials. So uh, I work my pins to be on hand all the time. At the sewing machine, I can use them. I've got them whenever I'm pinning garments. They're right here all the time. Now a little note, a lot of people in the tutorial that I have uh, make this and they use it like a little porcupine, right? And they stick them all out like this. I don't use it like that because I wear this all the time. And so um, like they would catch on everything like this. It would be really hard to, to wear this. So if you notice all of mine, I've made mine quite high and all of my pins stick right in and they actually go like side by side. They don't stick down, they're going across and all sticking in and nothing sticks out. So I can just wear this like a bracelet. That's my little hot tip for you if you want to wear this all the time is to stick your pins so that nothing is catching on the outside and it's really, really useful. Next item is in fact pins. <laughs> so it's kind of like one of those obvious things but there are different things that people use these days instead of pins but for me no way I could not sew without pins there are two that I like just your standard I like little glass head um, pins and then I also use these longer uh, actual florist pins for sort of fitting and heavier duty pinning so to say I use those um, so uh, there's I've tried other different things or seen them and it's just not for me I like my pins to be able to pin uh, pattern pieces down to pin my like obviously my garments together and the seams before sewing is a must. It would be, although I sew a lot without pins, I still, they're absolutely required in my sewing kit. Okay, next one is a loop turner. So I was debating uh, whether to put this in or what to put for the sort of last one that I, that I put in. Now uh, I put this, wait, I guess you maybe don't know what a loop turner is. So this is called a loop turner. 
and what you do it's got this little hook on the end and basically it's for turning roulette straps or those like thin little tube straps spaghetti straps things like that so you actually insert it through um, your little tube strap and then it hooks around the very end and so then you can turn it inside itself and pull it out so I have one that is for that and I also have another one that I very messily put um, masking tape on the end and I use this as a little pusher to actually push out corners because it's so thin and delicate it doesn't bend it's perfect so I actually use these all of the time and I know a lot of people wanted tools and things that they might not have heard of before so I put this one in here so if you don't haven't ever heard of one of these I would recommend getting the two perhaps use them like I do one as a pusher and one as a puller and whilst I always recommend that you try and buy secondhand or thrifted items where possible, a lot of these tools and equipment you just can't. So I have actually uh, linked down below um, some links to Amazon where you can find these products. Uh, these are affiliate links and so it doesn't cost you anything extra to use those links, but it does uh, help me out and this channel and support this channel. So I thank you very much in advance for using the links uh, that are down below. Of course, I could not sew without my dressmaking shears. So proper dressmaking shears. I have uh, a few pairs. So these ones were my original ones that I um, got when I started fashion college a long time ago. Still use them, still work, still sharp. But then I got these uh, bigger ones um, and I have an even bigger pair than this as well <laughs> for cutting lots of big things. Um, and they're just wonderful. They fit in my hand really comfortable. Mine are a brand called Mundial. I highly recommend them. You only need to get one pair once and you use them for the rest of your life. So these are definitely in my sewing kit that I, I could not sew without proper dressmaking shears. And yes, death to anybody who uses my dressmaking shears on anything other than fabric. We all know this. It's a standard rule in the sewing room. So with the dressmaking shears, it's kind of, I just put these in here because I didn't, otherwise it's kind of like a bonus. It's kind of an 11 that I'm putting in here. So our little tiny embroidery scissors. Oh, I could not sew without these. So I found these so many years ago. Unfortunately, I haven't found another pair the same as this. So these are shaped so you can sort of cut along the table like this. They're super pointy at the end so you can stab through fabric and cut right to the very end. And they're super, super sharp. So I use these all the time to cut open buttonholes to trim off little tiny slithers of fabric here and there. And it's just so, so useful. And it's the shape and everything of these that make these so great for me. So I uh, definitely always in my sewing kit. My grading ruler. So, ah, uh, gosh, where would I be without this one? So this is my second one. I have my original one that I got in fashion college. I think it's up there somewhere and all the numbers are like worn off and <laughs> barely used barely used heavily used you can barely see them this is how I do pattern making and everything um, on the pattern table is with my grading ruler so it's not quite um, one of those quilting ones you see are quite a bit thicker uh, that's a bit too thick for sort of pattern making this one is just perfect so I definitely wouldn't want to do any sort of pattern making without this because it would be impossible and with that comes pattern paper so I'm a tracer and I like to trace it on to uh, pattern paper I always trace off my patterns I always make alterations I always make my own patterns so I need pattern paper to be able to do my sewing routine so I usually use this brown craft paper I have an enormous giant roll uh, back in my original studio um, that hopefully I'll get to soon uh, and I think the like uh, get the widest that you can sort of 90 centimeters or a yard is usually about it um, and the thickness of the paper is quite important from memory this one is about a 65 grams uh, I'll put it that uh, down below in the description for you as well but that's the pattern paper I like more sturdy than the tissue paper but not too thick that you can't kind of fold it up and use it it's just that's definitely required I always use Taylor's chalk so this is the next one my essentials uh, is these ones here the brand I like the most is by Clover now I have experimented with a lot of different brands and they are not created equal let me tell you that so some are really crumbly and powdery and they just like disintegrate into little tufts of 
powder. Others are really like you can't get a line. So this is the one that I love the most and basically get one in every color and you just use it and sharpen it. Now I know a lot of people don't like these because it's really awkward and how do you do it? But for me, this is essential. I use it to trace my patterns, mark my notches, mark anything on my fabric. I use my Taylor's chalk. Ooh, next one, just a minute. If you told me I had to try and sew without my fancy steam iron, I would tell you no. Oh, so this is what I call my fancy steam iron. So I think they're called steam generators or um, steam stations. But basically, oh, <laughs> this here is a boiler tank of water, so it can really get proper steam in here. It's kind of a halfway point between an industrial iron and a domestic iron. We know the domestic ones are awful. So this is perfect. So you can steam vertically, so you can use it like a steamer and also obviously flat. Now this one is like, oh my love. So they don't make this one unfortunately anymore, but you can um, heat, you can change the uh, temperature separate from the amount of steam that you want. So I can select any temperature I want and then I can select the amount of steam I I want there's also an eco mode so when you have it on for say a really long time and you just want it on standby type thing it's really really great so this one's by tfal i uh, said so they don't make this particular model anymore and the new ones i've seen actually only have sort of five settings of temperature that you can select i don't like that i would personally choose something that you can select any temperature because i don't want only five selections oh so anyway i would not sew with that like the difference that this makes from those domestic irons if you hate ironing promise you this one of these is worth every single penny that you spend on investing on it it is definitely worth it i would not sew without this one and I'm absolutely sure you've seen in my videos before me using these things. So these are a Taylor's uh, ham and well, a Taylor's sausage. <laughs> I just call them all pressing hams. <laughs> um, but basically these are to press. So you would, ah. so they're used for pressing. So you can get very accurate and like really neat and over curves and open things up properly. So you use them to press with. So the idea is that obviously your um, garment curves around here and then when you press down, you're only pressing like an area this big rather than on the flat surface, you'd have to press the entire thing and it gets very messy very quickly. So I would definitely not want to sew without one of these and I promise you if you invest in these, again, you only need to buy them once, one time and it will improve your sewing oh, tenfold. And you don't even have to get better at sewing, it's just by the iron and some pressing hands, I promise. Now you can actually um, make these yourself and well, um, absolutely. I didn't and I wouldn't. <laughs> One is very messy, so they're filled with sawdust. Uh, so you have to try and fill it and then hand stitch it up somehow. Uh, and you really need to get the right kind of sawdust. So a lot of people will stuff these worth of fabric. Avoid it if you can, because you want this to be smooth, right? You're pressing down on this. Any lump or bump is going to show on your garment and you won't get a nice result. So you need the really fine sawdust, not the sort of chips, really fine. Um, it's really important. It's for me, uh, I mean, they're not that expensive and you just get it once and you'll use it your entire sewing life. So it's definitely worth the investment for me, but uh, you can make your own. And I've seen a lot of people be successful at it if you're willing to get your hands a little bit sawdusty, dirty perhaps. So remember, I do have linked below uh, links to all of these items, uh, different variations of them at least uh, that you can look for. They are affiliate links. Uh, and I do thank you very, very much for using those because it does help me support. It helps me and supports this channel, which I thank you. My goodness, I almost forgot to actually show you uh, my box here. So this was crafted by my beautiful partner who actually did this as a surprise for me quite some time ago. So this is a vintage, you know, cantilever sewing box. It was actually all burnt out um, on one side, completely burnt, and he refurbished the entire thing. So dovetail joins, everything. So we've got um, little like velvet on top. Yes, this is completely hand painted. Let me show you the other side. So the inside, what do we have? Is of course all velvet lined as well. Look at this, isn't it amazing? I nearly fell over when I uh, was given this. And the other side, the same. Let me show you inside here. You can see it's all this red velvet lined all the way through. 
and it's just delightful. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. These are my top 10. As I said, there's a lot of items that I use, but uh, <laughs> in my daily sewing routine, but are not here because this is the top 10. So I want to hear from you, my sewing friends. What are your top, well, let's say at least uh, three to five items that are your absolute favorites you would not want to sew with without. Leave a comment below uh, and tell us those and don't remember to read them all because they might just be some nice, neat gadgets if you're just trying to get your sewing kit together. I really look forward to reading what your sewing gadgets, your favorite tools are. And as always, my friends, thank you so very much for watching and until next time, Bye.